right, so this is lesson two in the scale factors and similarity unit. Today we're learning how to determine a scale factor and the size of enlargements or reductions. So there's um, lots of places in real life when it doesn't really make sense to draw something like at its actual size. Either it's way too big of an item to draw or it's way too small. Um, so we either make a reduction or an enlargement and draw a scale diagram. So a quick example here that's on this page is this picture, right? This is not the actual size of the CN Tower. This is a scale, um, a scale picture, a scale photograph of the CN Tower. Um, yeah, um, we use scales a lot in math, or sorry, in maps. We use them um, when we are designing like buildings and houses. Uh, we use them in science when we're looking at microscopic images. We make them larger so that we can understand them. Okay, so important, some key terms to start. Uh, scale is the relationship between the drawing size and the actual size. Usually we see it as a ratio and we always write it in a certain order. We always write it as the um, diagram or the image size to the actual size. Okay, a scale reduction is used when we make the image smaller. So it's used to illustrate things that are too large to draw, would not be practical, right? So buildings, um, maps, vehicles, planes, anything that would be way too large to draw, large animals, sports fields, Right? It wouldn't make sense to draw like a picture of an elephant, for example, at its regular size. It would be way too big to draw. Um, so we draw a smaller scale reduction of that. A scale enlargement is when um, we use it to illustrate things that are too small to draw. Oops, I forgot an O there. Small to draw. Right, so um, example, cells, right? Pictures of atoms you might see in your science textbook. Um, very small living organisms, small animals, like insects, bacteria, things like that, okay? Um, a scale factor is the number used as a multiplier when scaling. And we'll practice using those as a multiplier. So when the scale factor is larger than, oh, let me do this better, larger than one, that means we are gonna make the image bigger. It's gonna be an enlargement. So when we have a scale factor that's larger than one, we're making the image larger. When we have a scale factor that is less than one, we are making the image smaller, we're gonna get a reduction Okay. Let's have a look at this example. So it says determine the scale factor. So on the right is a photograph of the CN Tower. Um, the photograph depicts a scale model since every dimension of the actual object has been reduced by the same factor. The actual height of the CN Tower is 553 meters, and this is seven centimeters in the picture. Determine the scale and then the scale factor expressed as a fraction. Okay, so first thing we have to do is convert both measurements to the same unit, because when we get our multiplier, it's, gonna, it's not gonna make sense if we're changing units as well. So um, let's change everything into centimeters here so we don't have any decimals to deal with. Um, so 553 meters 
is the same as, so there's 100 centimeters in one meter. And so that would be 55,300 centimeters. Okay, step two, we're gonna determine the scale. So the scale is gonna be, um, so the scale is seven centimeters is the picture and it's 55,300 is the actual CN tower. It's always in that order, picture to the actual size. Um, we can reduce this. We can divide both of those by seven. So we get one to 7,900. Um, as our scale and this is a reduction because we've drawn the picture smaller than the actual size right okay and lastly we're gonna do the scale factor and it's basically just the um, the scale written as a fraction so um, it would be 1 over 7900 if you multiply 1 over 7,900 by the actual size, you get the height. Okay, so it's like the multiplier that tells you how big you're drawing or how tall your drawing should be. So that's our scale factor. And this is less than 1 because we have a reduction here. We have a smaller image than the actual size. Okay, let's look at the next example. So this time we have a common scale. I'm just going to underline key things. We have a common scale for a collectible toy plan, plane that is 1 to 72. Use the measurement of the wingspan in the photo to get the actual wingspan of the plane. Express your answer in the most appropriate SI units. So 1 to 72. Remember the first number is the drawing. And the second number is the original, or the actual, I call it the actual size. So what we wanna do here is take the 11.7 centimeters and multiply it by 72 to get um, the actual size on the plane. So I'm gonna take the 11.7 centimeters because the plane is 72 times larger than the drawing. And when we do that, we get 842.4 centimeters. That's not really, you wouldn't really use that, it's not really appropriate. Um, it's probably better to change it to meters. So we're gonna change this 842.4 centimeters into meters. Remember that we always wanna cancel out the units we're changing from and have the units we're changing to in the numerator. So we have one meter is 100 centimeters. So it'd be 8.424 meters is the actual wingspan. Okay. Um, so that's uh, the end of the lesson.